G'day, Algebra Addicts. Welcome back to Magrathematics, the first and only math channel on YouTube. Today, we're going to continue off our um, glorious campaign from last week where we started learning about mathematical induction. This week's video is looking at some different style of questions to last week's video, um, different, different kind of problems that can also be solved using mathematical induction in the Extension 1 course. Okay, without more boring preamble, let's dive into our first example. For the first one, we have an expression, a number, times uh, the number plus 2. We're trying to prove that this is divisible by 4 anytime n is a positive even integer. So starting with 2, 4, 6, 8, etc. Okay, so different style of question to what we were looking at last week. Let's dive right in with our first case. Unlike all the examples from last video, um, all of those were starting with n equals 1 as our first value. For this one, because we are only looking at um, even numbers, we're starting with n equals 2. So when we sub n equals 2 into our expression, we get 2 multiplied by 2 plus 2, so 2 times 4. That gets us an answer of 8, and 8 is of course equal to 4 times 2, so 8 is divisible by 4, so it works in the initial case when n is equal to 2. Now for our assumption, we're going to assume that when n is equal to k, this expression is divisible by 4. Now the way we're going to write divisible by 4 is we're going to say that this expression is equal to 4 times something, where that something is an integer. Normally I would use n or k for this, but n and k are both already taken up by the question, so I'm just going to go with m. So m represents an arbitrary in integer. That's our assumption. This is a multiple of 4. Now we're going to attempt to prove... That was weird. We're going to attempt to prove that for the next uh, case, which remember, because we're looking at only even numbers for this proof, the next case is an n equals k plus 1, because that would be an odd number. The next even number after n equals k will be n equals k plus 2. So another trick to this question is instead of stepping up by 1 for your um, proof step, we're stepping up by 2. So now k becomes k plus 2, k plus 2 becomes k plus 4. Now this is our expression for k plus 2 that we are attempting to show is equal to 4 times something. And we're allowed to use the fact that k times k plus 2 is equal to 4m. So let's have a play around with this and see how we can get that to work. We're going to start by expanding and simplifying. So we'll end up with k squared, 6k, and then 8 on the end. Now we are very cleverly going to split the 6k into a 2k and a 4k. All right. The reason I did that is because I want to have a k squared plus 2k that I can factorize to get k times k plus 2. Because that was what we established in our assumption is divisible by 4. So when we get k times k plus 2, we can substitute this for 4 times m, where m is something, and it looks like this. Now in our expression, we have three things that all have a common factor of 4, so we can factorize the 4 out the front, and we get m plus k plus 2. Anyway, the point is, we've gotten our um, target to equal something which is a multiple of 4, so therefore, this is a multiple of 4, it's divisible by 4, therefore, it works when n is equal to k plus 2. So we've shown it's true, so therefore, um, by the principle of mathematical induction, um, n times n plus 2 is always divisible by 4 when n is a positive even integer. Okay, that was fun. Let's move on to the next one. Um, the next kind of question that the HSC loves to throw at you is a question involving factorials. Try to spice it up a little bit, but as long as you understand how factorials work and you understand how to manipulate factorials, these questions are usually pretty straightforward and just require a little bit of manipulation. Okay, here's our statement. We're trying to prove it for n greater than 1. So we'll start off with n equal to 1. We're going to get 1 times 1 factorial on the left. On the right, we've got 1 plus 1 factorial minus 1. All right, left-hand side is 1 times 1. On the right, we've got 2 factorial, which is 2. Take away 1, which is 1. So we end up with 1 equals 1. It works. The initial case is shown to be true. Now for our assumption, we're setting n equal to a k and we are assuming that this statement holds true. And now, here's our assumption. We're going to try and use this to prove for n equals k plus 1. So just like last week, we're writing the left-hand side the exact same. We're just adding on the next term. Next term is k becomes k plus 1 and k factorial becomes k plus 1 factorial. Right-hand side, the k plus 1 is being increased to k plus 2 factorial. And so this is our goal to achieve over on the right here. For the left, we can substitute that everything up to the k times k factorial in the sum from the assumption is equal to k minus, sorry, k plus 1 factorial minus 1. So left-hand side from here to here is becoming k plus 1 factorial minus 1 from our assumption. 
All right, now we've got a bit of a mess, but what's good about this mess is that there are a couple of common factors. At the front, we have a K plus one factorial, and on the end here, we also have a K plus one factorial. We're not really worried about the minus one because in the right-hand side of our answer, there is a minus one, so we kind of want that to hang around. We're just gonna forget about that for now. Okay, if we rearrange the expression a bit to put the K plus one, K plus one factorial at the start, minus one at the end where we want it, now if we do a bit of factorizing, taking the k plus one factorial out of both the front and middle terms, at the front, this is gonna leave us with k plus one because we've taken out the k plus one factorial. For the middle term, when you factor k plus one factorial out of k plus one factorial, you get one. So that's why there's a plus one here. So to go from this line to this line, we're just factorizing the first two terms by taking out the common factor of k plus one factorial. Okay, now inside this bracket, we have k plus one plus one, which is k plus two. Now, when you have k plus one factorial times the next number, k plus two, this is like if you had five factorial times six. The six adds onto the string and it turns it into six factorial. So when you multiply a factorial by the next number, it turns into the next number factorial, which is good because that is the right-hand side as we were required to prove. So therefore we've shown it's true when n equals k plus one, therefore true for all n greater than or equal to one by the principle of mathematical induction. See, told you, they're fun. As long as you get how to play around with factorials, these are usually pretty doable. Okay, on to example three, another divisibility one. We are using induction to prove that the sum of any three consecutive cube numbers is divisible by nine. Okay, so cube numbers look like this. Something cubed plus the next number cubed plus the next number cubed. That's what consecutive means. It means one after another. So cubic number, next cubic number, next cubic number, all added together, we are trying to show that this is equal to nine times something. This is what we are required to prove. Let's start off with our initial case. Um, it says any three consecutive cube numbers. So we're gonna assume that n is equal to one. So starting off with n equals one, we get one cubed plus two cubed plus three cubed, which is one plus eight plus 27. Adding those all together, we get 36, and 36 is equal to nine times four, so it is equal to nine times something. So the initial case, n equals one, holds true. For our assumption, we're gonna assume that when n equals k, uh, that this holds true, so we're changing n equal to k, and assuming that this is equal to nine times m, and m is just something, it's a whole number. Now I'm gonna try and show that by increasing k's to k plus ones, the equality also holds. So the first term becomes k plus one, k plus one becomes k plus two, and k plus two becomes k plus three. Now we're gonna to have to do a bit of expanding here. We don't wanna expand the k plus one or the k plus two cubed because those are in our assumption. We actually want those. The thing that sort of sticks out like a sore thumb is the k plus three cubed. So we're gonna start off by expanding this. You can either do three brackets, or if you're feeling fancy like me, you can do a bit of binomial theorem like this. 3c0, 3c1, 3c2, 3c3. Ks starting with powers of three, stepping down to powers of zero. And the three starting with power of zero, stepping up to power of, um, oh my God, that should be a three to the power of three. I am stupid, apologies for that, that's a typo. Uh, okay, uh, I got the answer correct though. When you figure all that out, you end up with k plus one cubed, k plus two cubed, and k plus three cubed, when you expand and simplify the whole thing, you end up with k cubed, nine k squared, 27 k, and then 27. Now, the good thing here is that in our right-hand side, or sorry, our left-hand side, we have k cubed, k plus one cubed, and k plus two cubed, and those were the three pieces in our assumption. So we know when these three parts add together, it's equal to nine times something. So pushing that up a bit, setting these three equal to nine m, and now what do you know? You've got four expressions and all of them have a common factor of nine. We can factor the nine out the front. We get m, k squared, three k and three. So we've successfully shown that the expression is equal to nine times something. So it's true for n equals k plus one. And therefore it's true for all n greater than or equal to one uh, by induction. Okay, cool. Moving on to example four, which is an HSC question from 2015. It's a band three, so it's not super spicy, but it does have some um, factorials and some fractions. So it's definitely not gonna be a walk in the park. Okay, if you're having success with these questions and you feel like you understand what I'm saying, you're welcome to pause the video, have a crack at this one by yourself before I run through my solution. And you know, maybe we'll be on the same page. Maybe you'll do it better than me. It is possible. I am 
not great. All right, starting off with n equal to one on the left-hand side. Left-hand side is gonna be one over two factorial. The right-hand side is gonna be one minus one over two factorial. So left-hand side is a half and the right-hand side is one minus a half, which is equal to a half. So it works, n equals one works. That's the easiest mark you're gonna get in the entire HSC exam is the first step of induction, piece of cake. Step two, set the uh, n's equal to k's and assume that it works. And now step three is change the k's to k plus ones and then hope that it works. So next term in the series after the left-hand side, we're gonna add on the k plus one on the top and the bottom is gonna become k plus two factorial. The right-hand side is gonna become one minus one over k plus two factorial. That's our goal for the left-hand side. Okay, oh, sorry for the right-hand side. Let's get to work. On the left, our assumption from the one over two factorial all the way up to the k over k plus one factorial. In our assumption, we said that this is equal to one minus one over k plus one factorial. So we'll just yoink that in there. So that just goes there on the left-hand side. And then we have the k plus one over k plus two factorial. Okay, I used this trick in um, last week's video. When you've got a minus and a plus and you're trying to show it's equal to a minus, it's gonna make your life easy if you swap those around. Just trust me, the algebra just gets less tricky. Put the plus first and the minus second and it's much, much nicer to work with in my humble math teacher opinion. All right. Now, to combine these two fractions together, of course, we need to make the uh, bases of the fractions equal to the same thing. This base is k plus two factorial. This one is k plus one factorial. So, using the trick from the previous question, if we multiply the top and bottom of this fraction by k plus two, when you multiply k plus one factorial by the next number up, which is k plus two, this is gonna turn into k plus two factorial, of course, and now the top just becomes k plus two. So make some space, yoink that in there, and now k plus two on the top, k plus two factorial on the bottom. Now the bases are the same. We can combine our fractions by doing k plus one minus k plus two all in brackets. Uh, on the top here, we're gonna get k minus k, which is nothing. We're gonna get one minus two, which is negative one. So we can put the negative out the front, put the one on the top, and then we get the right-hand side as required. Bada bing, bada boom, induction works. Did I conclude? I did, I'm a very good boy. Okay, I'm exhausted, but I feel like we've got one more question. We do, oh, this one's beautiful. 2012, my first year that I wasn't in high school. What a treat of a year. Band four, so a bit spicier than the last one. Let's see if we need any milk. We're starting off with two to the power of three n, take away three to the power of n. We're trying to show that this is always divisible for five if n is greater than or equal to one. Okay, we haven't done a question quite like this yet, but these are pretty common HSC style questions. So please um, pay attention and try and practice some questions like these because you see these um, every few years in HSC exams. Starting off with n equal to one, we get two to the power of three, take away three to the power of one, so we get eight minus three, that's equal to five, and would you believe five is divisible by five, so it works when n is equal to one. One mark out of three, done and dusted, let's try and scrape together the last two. Next step is we are assuming that when n is equal to k, our expression is equal to five times something, where m is something. Um, okay, so we're assuming that, and now we're going to try and, um, what's going on here? Okay, now I forgot to write in the step. Is it here? That's okay, sorry, my transitions are back to front. Now setting n equal to k plus one, our power becomes two times, sorry, two to the power of three times k plus one, minus three to the power of k plus one. Okay, make some room. Sweet, now we are going to attempt to prove that this expression here is equal to five times something, and all we have to use that is the fact that this is equal to five times something. So first thing you wanna do for a question like these is you wanna make your expression look like this expression by splitting powers. What I mean by that is when we expand this out, we get three K plus three, and this one's K plus one. Now we're gonna write these using kind of the reverse of our index laws. If I had two to the three K times two to the three, when you're multiplying, you add powers, yeah? So the power becomes 3k plus three, which is here. We're just doing that in reverse and we're splitting them apart. So two to the three k here, two to the three here. Same thing on the end, splitting the three to the power of k plus one into a three to the k and a three to the one. Because when we multiplied these, the powers would add and we would get that. 
Hopefully that makes sense because it's crucial to this question. Now two to the power of three is eight and uh, three to the power of one is three. Now we have a two to the three K and a three to the K. So now we have something that's common with our uh, assumed expression. So we can now use our assumed expression. We're gonna write this in blue and I'm actually going to move the minus three to the K across to the right to become a positive three to the K. Now I have an expression for two to the power of three K and it's involving a five. So this line here in blue is just gonna get yoinked over here and put inside this bracket next to the eight. So we're rearranging our assumption, substituting it into our expression. And now when we expand, we get eight times five M, which is 40 M. We get eight lots of three to the power of K. And on the end, we have minus three, lots of three to the power of K. Now imagine this was eight X take away three X. The answer would be five X. So because we have eight of these and we're taking away three of these, we get five of these. Once we do a little rearrangement, we get five of these. All right, writing the 40M as five times eight M, what do you know? We have two pieces in our expression and they both have a common factor of five that we can yoink out the front. And there you go. Our expression for K plus one is equal to five times something. It works, induction works. Credits roll, see you later. Okay, cool. Thank you for watching along. Hopefully a lot of that, um, some of it at least made sense to you and hopefully you feel more confident uh, at applying yourself to mathematical induction questions. Uh, we'll be starting a new topic of trigonometry in the next few weeks. So if you are bad at trig and need some help, maybe consider um, following along and I'll see if I can help you out. Thanks for watching. Catch you guys in the next video. Bye for now. Not forever.